This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at the Comet Cat 300 antenna tuner. This is an analog manual tuner, and with a little bit of effort, you can figure out how to use it best. That's what's coming up this week on Elkara Ham Radio. Well, let's take a look at the Comet Cat 300 antenna tuner. Here we have Vanna White, also known as KY4CKP, uh, opening up the box here. Mick at Comet was gracious enough to send us this unit. We talked to Mick a little bit at Hamvention and uh, asked if he had uh, one of these that he could send us, and he said, certainly. So we want to thank Comet and Mick specifically for sending us this unit. Chris is showing us the two-page manual front and back pages, and then we take the unit out of the box. Now, we're not big, you know, let's take it out of the box kind of people, but we thought we would do a little bit of that with this product. You can see we've got a little bit of bubble wrap here. And then the unit itself is in the cellophane packaging. And it's a handsome unit. I remember looking at it at Hamvention. They also had, I believe, the backlight on. Maybe not. There, you can't apply power to this from the standpoint of just lighting up the meter, the analog meter. We didn't do so for these tests, but we plan to do so as this will be added to our emergency communications trailer for radios that do not have a built-in tuner. So here's the wire. Now you could put Anderson power poles on that, then hook that into your 12 volt power system, DC power, and uh, light up the meters. Especially if you were working, maybe you were doing a pod activation and you were out uh, at a park or something. As long as you've got some 12 volt DC, you could put those Anderson power poles on that cable and then connect that to the unit. Chris is going to now take it out of the plastic packaging here. And like I said, this is a handsome unit, not overly complicated, but there are a few knobs and dials here that we're going to get into. There's the actual analog meter. You can see we've got a power range button, TR tune, X tune, band select, on off for tuning, and which antenna do you want to use. Here on the back on the left, we have the two antenna inputs plus a long wire input that uses a banana plug. And then we have our input section on the right hand side. And a ground lug there if you wanted to ground the unit. You can also see the 12 volt in there in the top right corner. Now let's take a closer look at some of the knobs and so forth and describe what each of them does. Alrighty, so now we're looking at uh, the left hand side of all the knobs and so forth. The power range has a couple of press no uh, buttons here. Uh, you, you can see with the uh, silk screen if the button is out you want to keep your radio below 30 watts or less, and they recommend in the directions uh, to keep it actually around 10 watts as you're doing your testing. And this is really just to protect your radio, but it could be pressed in and handle up to 300 watts. You also can take a look at your meter readings utilizing average or PEP, where you can see your peak envelope. But uh, uh, we didn't find much of a difference between that button, but if uh, you're a stickler for uh, average versus PEP, you can certainly select that. So now we can see the TR tune in the top left here. This is going to adjust your impedance on the input side or transmitter side of the tuner. You have your X tune, which is going to control uh, the impedance on the output side or the antenna side. Basically, these two knobs are adjusting two different capacitors that mesh together uh, in conjunction. So you'll need to utilize both of these knobs when working with tuning the antenna to your radio. And we also have a band select knob. And I'm going to show you the uh, directions here in just a minute, but there's a nice chart that comes with the tuner. And this band select knob plus initial... Uh, settings for the two knobs will get you in the ballpark on most of your antennas. We'll show you that in just a few minutes. You have a button on the bottom left there for turning the tuner on and off. If it's off, it'll just show you the SWR. And then on the right-hand side, bottom right, you can see you can select either antenna 1 or antenna 2. 
As an aside here, there are actually two different options with Antenna 2. You can use the SO239 on the back of the unit, which uh, is what we used in our testing, but there is also a long wire option if you want to tune such an antenna. So Antenna 2 has a little bit of some flexibility versus coax versus long wire tuning. Now looking at the back side of the radio, you can see the two antenna uh, connectors there, the SO239 plus the red uh, connector there, that's a banana connection for a long wire and that will work with antenna number two. On the right hand side you've got your radio output uh, connector there, SO239, and then the ground lug as we saw a little bit earlier, plus the 12 volt DC in the top right corner if you wanted to light up that analog meter. So that's the backside. Pretty straightforward and clean. That's one of the things that I like about this unit. Now what we're looking at here is the back of the unit. We actually have the gray cable you can see there going to the antenna and then we have a, a shorter black cable, coax, going to uh, one of the antenna outputs on the radio. Now this is a TS-480 uh, sat from Kenwood and later on we actually swapped this out. The Kenwood actually has its own tuner and we didn't want it in any way to impact our testing so we ended up swapping that out. Here we've actually got a couple of ham sticks for 20 meters uh, up on the mast and what we wanted to do was get this close to uh, what the tuner can can tune. In the directions, it will actually actually let you know that somewhere between two and a half to one is where it can help you fine tune, not much beyond that. And that's pretty common if you think about regular radios is they'll say they can tune three an SWR three to one or lower. This in the direction says two and a half. You might be able to get away with a little bit more than that, but what we're looking at here with the Comet CAA500 Mark II is what was our SWR. So you can see a little over two, somewhere in that ballpark. It's actually doing a sweep here. And so we would be within that envelope that the tuner can actually tune. If you were looking at this tuner to tune a fence or a metal chair or you know something that would just have ungodly SWR, this is not that unit. Uh, two and a half, it, you might be able to push it a little bit further than that. Uh, but we got the antenna ham sticks uh, right around two, two and a half, so that we can let the meter do the rest of the work. So based on the readings there from the Comet uh, the antenna analyzer, we're in that range. You can see that sweep. We're a little bit to the left of where we want to be. Uh, on the far right, of course, the uh, SWR is too high, but we're, we're okay with that. Uh, we didn't want the antenna to be tuned exactly. We actually wanted the antenna to be slightly off, a little bit low in the band as far as good SWR. And you can see right there, we're running one more sweep. And you can see the, also the uh, resistance or impedance is going up as we move to the right of the band. So the antenna we fussed with just a little bit. You can adjust those stingers on the ham sticks to get it within that envelope. Now, this is something that I wanted to show you. This is in the documentation where you can see where it would like you to start with your knobs, your TR tune and your X tune for each of the bands uh, as far as the initial settings, and then you can adjust it from there. So I'm gonna freeze it here so you can see this a little bit better. We were on 20 meters, and if you look at 20 meters, which is gonna be roughly uh, in that 14 megahertz range, you could see that we needed to be the TR tune knob at 1.5 and the X tune knob at one, right there in the center. But what I really like about this is, you know, for all the other bands that this can help you tune, uh, you've got a good starting point. Instead of wondering where to start, they have already set up the table to say, start here and then go from there. And as we found in our test, it is very sensitive. Each of the knobs is very sensitive. If you make big swings in those knobs, you're not going to see those minute changes. Start at the positions here in the chart and then just barely make adjustments with the TR and X2 knobs. Now in the rest of our tests, what we needed to do, and you can see we've swapped out the radio to one that doesn't include a tuner itself, we're actually going to uh, put out a call so that we can get a little bit of a signal going through. Ideally, you might want to utilize a, a, a tone, like a, if you had your paddle hooked up for CW, where you could do a constant tone. Uh, but we were utilizing a long call out here, whether or not a frequency was in use, just to be able to see the analog meters. You can see with the default settings for 20 meters that we were getting the needles to bounce reasonably well. But is it fully in tuned? 
And this is where we really had to kind of play with it a little bit because we were new to this unit. You can see our SWR is actually in pretty good shape. Forward power is on the left-hand side and reflected power is on the right. And as long as we stay within those green areas there on the far right, we would be in pretty good shape. But we haven't adjusted the knobs again. Those were just their default uh, uh, settings based on the table that we had in the directions. You can see here our forward power is really not all that great, even though the radio was putting out 10 watts. We're not getting 10 watts out in this uh, section. You can see that the SWR is reasonably good, but the, re the forward power not so much, and that means we need to fiddle with the knobs just a little bit. So let's fiddle with the TR knob first. So we're putting out the call. You can see low forward power, moving that knob, moving that knob, but you can see I went too fast. One of the things you'll learn with this is that these knobs are extremely sensitive. So you can see we're not getting a lot of forward power. Now let's watch this knob come back to the default position. You'll see that it will bump up briefly and then go back down because I went past it. Now let's come back and let's be very gentle with that knob. Now the reflected power was better. Same thing for the X-Tune. Now this is on the impedance on the output side. You can see and its default position was good and then it dropped down because I went past it. And again, if you go too quickly, you'll be, you'll be past it before you know it. You really have to be very, very, uh, shall we say, slow in adjusting these two knobs. I'm coming, or actually I'm, I think I'm coming back. You'll see it bounce back up, forward power. It's going to go up. There we go, but I need to bring that knob back so that that forward power stays up around 10 watts. There we go. Now you can see it's starting and we're getting about 10 watts out. That SWR on the far right hand side stayed relatively low and a function of that is, is because we had tuned the antenna to be a low SWR. Now we're being very, very sluggish in adjusting that knob so that we can get it really tuned in. Uh, to our about 10 watts there. And then the same with the X-Tune knob. We're being very, very slow. And you can see you're hitting 10, hitting 10. And we'll actually get higher there where we got just really good setting there. And it was slightly different than what was in the table. You can see we're about 2, well, about 1.75 to about 1, just 1. Or a little less than 1, I think it was, there on the far right-hand side. So again, just finishing the tuning there on the on the X-Tune knob, you can see we're at about 10 watts, but as I continue to mess with it just ever so slightly, we got really good forward power out, and the SWR, again, stayed within that green band. There you go. You can see we're doing really well about right there. And if you look to the right, I'm almost exactly on one. So the question becomes, would we utilize this tuner in our emergency communications trailer? Do we find that this uh, antenna tuner provides value? And the answer is unequivocally, well, yes, sure, certainly it does. Now, you can argue that many of the radios that are out there today uh, from ICOM, Kenwood, and Yesu have built-in tuners. If that is the case, you won't need this device. If you have older radios... Uh, radios that did not come with automatic tuning. This is a wonderful little device. It's not overly uh, expensive. It's easy to read, which for a lot of us is a big deal, especially as your eyesight becomes less and less helpful. And so the analog meters on this are nice, especially with the backlit, which we didn't uh, take advantage of in our testing, but would certainly help you in low light conditions. The one thing to be careful of is make sure your power is down around 10 watts for your, most of your tuning. Yes, it will take up to 300 watts if you wanted to do all of your testing at 10 and then increase your power to up to 300 watts while the meter is still uh, uh, measuring your forward power, your reflected power, and your SWR, you can certainly go up to 300 watts. Nothing more than that. If you're, you know, hooked up to an amplifier and you're going to do, you know, more than 300, this again is not the unit for you. I like the fact that the band select is, uh, there's so many different bands you can use from uh, 160 all the way down to six. So that's actually pretty cool and easy to uh, set up. We did our tests using 20 meters. We didn't use some of the other bands all that much, but we plan to in the future. So 40 meters, of course, 20 meters, and maybe some of the other bands. So it's very flexible in that regard. And you can utilize this with up to two antennas uh, for your your needs with, again, a radio without an automatic tuner. So I would recommend this. This is, again, available from Comet. 
Great build, good build quality, came completely undamaged. I think you'll enjoy it. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP Brian. We hope you liked the video. Go and take a look at the Comet Cat 300 Antenna Tuner and have fun with it. 73.